We've been talking about circles all this chapter. Now we're going to learn to write and graph equations of circles. Uh, in other words, we're going to apply the circles to the coordinate plane and relate it to the algebra that we've learned. Let xy represent any point on a circle with a center at the origin and a radius of r. You can see this above. By the Pythagorean theorem, if it point on the circle is x y, then one side is x long and the other one is y long, so x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared by Pythagorean theorem. This is the equation of a circle with a radius of r in a center at the origin of the coordinate plane. So if I want to write an equation for this circle, I see that it is center is at the origin of the coordinate plane, so it's right here at 0, 0. I find my radius is 1, 2, 3 by simply counting. And so since the radius is 3, I simply plug in x squared plus y squared is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. So the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals 9. You can write the equation of any circle on the coordinate plane if you know its radius and the coordinates of the center. If I have a, coordinate, a circle whose center is, has the coordinates of h and k, a radius of r, then one side of that circle is x minus h, the other side is y minus k, <coughs> and then, as I said, my radius is r, so we plug in the Pythagorean theorem x minus the x value of the center of the circle squared plus the quantity y minus the y value of the center quantity squared will always equal r squared. This is known as the standard equation of a circle. Write the standard equation of a circle with a center 2, negative 9 and a radius of 4.2. Well, what I do is I just take my h, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, plug in my h, my k, and my r, and then simplify. So x minus 2 squared plus y plus 9 squared, notice to subtract negative 9 is to add 9, and then squaring 4.2, I get 17.64. So there is my equation. So here's a couple for you to try. Remember when the center is 0, 0, it's relatively easy. We just have x squared plus y squared equals, and we just have to square the 2.5 for 6.25. When my center is negative 2, 5, and my radius is 7, I plug into my x minus 8, so x minus negative 2 is x plus 2, quantity squared plus y minus 5 quantity squared is equal to 7 squared, which is 49. The point negative 5, 6 is on a circle that has a center of negative 1, 3. Write the standard equation of the circle. Well, to do that, I've got my center. That's negative 1, 3. But what I need is the radius. I need to know the distance for these two. Remember how we find our distance. We have our change in x and our change in y, and we plug it into Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of the change in x and the change in y, in this case, the change in x is 4, the change in y is 3, and so we end up with a radius of 5. Since we know our center, we simply plug into our formula y x plus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared is equal to 5 squared or 25. The point 3, 4 is on a circle whose center is 1, 4. Write the standard equation of this circle. So this one's for you to try. The standard of the equation of the circle is x minus 1 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 4. Now how did we get that? Remember, what we would need to do is we would need to find our r by getting the distance between these two points. So r is going to be the square root of the change in 
x, which is 2 squared, plus the change in y, which is 0 squared, or we could have graphed it and counted that, but we end up with r is equal to 2. The point negative 1, 2 is on a circle whose center is 2, 6. Write the standard equation of the circle. As you can see, what you should have gotten is x minus 2 squared plus y minus 6 squared is equal to 25. I believe you can see where this part comes from by using the center. How did we get the 25? We did our radius as the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. In this case, from 1 to 2 is 3 or negative 1 to 2 is 3 squared, 3, so that's 3 squared. And from 2 to 6 is 4 squared, so r comes out to be 5. So we plug into our formula and we have it. The equation of a circle is given, so graph the circle. Now, remember what we have to do. We have x minus 8 squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So in this case, that is x minus 4 squared, so h is 4, plus y minus k squared, that's y minus a negative 2 is the only way that would be positive 2. So we have our center of our circle at 1, 2, 3, 4, down 2. And then our radius is r squared is 36, so that makes r6. Probably the easiest thing to do is count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, put a dot, go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, to the left, and down. And we can then freehand a circle that goes through those points, or you can bring it in. The epicenter of an earthquake is a point on the Earth's surface directly above the earthquake's origin. A seismograph can be used to determine the distance to the epicenter of an earthquake. Seismographs are needed in three different places to locate an earthquake's epicenter. The epicenter is seven miles from point A, which is negative 2, 2.5, 4 miles from point B, 4, 6, and 5 miles from point C, 3, negative 2.5. So what we do is we graph these circles and we see where they meet. The epicenter is 7 miles from 2, negative 2.5. So if I put on ne negative 2, negative 2.5 right here, and then I do my seven miles away in each direction and draw my circle. Uh, probably to be accurate, you need a compass on this. The epicenter is four miles away. So what I've got is B starts at four, six, and has a radius of four. So notice my radius is one, two, three, four. And the third one was five miles away from three, negative 2.5, so I would go over three, down 2.5 for my circle, and then make a radius of five, and when I graph those, notice they all three meet right here at this point, so the epicenter was at the point five, two. So what we do is we graph all three using the place where the seismograph was as the center of the circle and its distance away in miles as the radius, we plot all three circles and see that the three circles made in one place and that would be the epicenter. So here's a little guided practice. Equation of the circle is given. Graph the circle. What we need to do is find our center point. Our center in this case is 4, negative 3, and our radius is 4. So we go to 4, negative 3, and do a radius of 4. What about this one? We're going to do our center, which is negative 8, negative 5, 
and the radius is 11. Negative 8, negative 5 with a radius of 11. Why are three seismographs needed to locate an earthquake's epicenter? If you will think about that, what we have is two circles could intersect in two points if they cross. So how do I know which of those two points it is? It's the one that that third circle would hit to. Sometimes the equation of a circle is written in another form and we have to use our algebra skills to put it in the standard form if we want to graph it. General form of equation is x squared plus y squared plus ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. This form is found by simply taking the equation of standard form and multiplying it all out, combining your terms, and putting it in the right order. For example, to do this, I would square each one of those, and then I would simply add everything, put it in the order of x squared plus y squared, your minus 6x, your minus 4y, and the 9 plus 4 minus the 16 comes up to be negative 3 and we have it equal to zero. But how do we get go in the other direction? Because it, if we have this form, we don't really need this form because we can graph from there. But if we have general form, how do we get it back to where we can graph from it? We use a method called completing the square. So I want to convert from general form back to standard form. We want the squares of the two binomials to be added together. And so we're going to take this and we're going to sort of work backwards and come up making this equation look like the other form. We're going to rearrange it so the like variables are grouped together and the constant is on the other side. So notice what I did. I moved the minus 6x up there to go with the x squared. I moved the minus 4y to go with the y squared, and then I move the negative 3 to the other side, making it positive 3. Once I get it in that form, then I need to turn this into something squared. That's where the completing the square comes from. The question now becomes, how do I turn x squared minus 6x and y squared minus 4y into the square of a binomial? For each one, take half of the coefficient of the linear term and add the results to both sides of the, square it, and then add the results to both sides. So here's what I'm doing. I'm looking at that negative 6, take half of it as negative 3, and squared is 9. So half of the negative 4 is 2, or half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add in a 9 to the x squared minus 6x, and add a 9 to the right. I'm going to add in a 4 to the y squared minus 4y and add it in to the right. And now I'm going to think about what it was I squared to get that 9. It was 3. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 becomes x minus 3 squared. y squared minus 4y plus 4 becomes y minus 2 squared. When I combine all that, that's 16. And there is my standard form. So let's try doing this one. First thing we're going to do is put it in standard form. So we're going to get our x's together, our y's together, move their 1 over. We're going to take half of negative 2, which is 1, and square it to get 1. Half of 6 is 3, square it to get 9. So I'm going to add a 1 into the first parentheses, a 9 into the second parentheses, and each of those on the right-hand side of the equation. That gives me x minus 1 squared, y minus 3 squared, and 9. So my center of my circle is at 1, 3, and the radius is at 3. So 1, 1, 2, 3. A radius of 3, remember I just count out 3 spaces in each direction so that I can then draw my circle. Find the center and radius of a circle represented by the equation given. So. I will go through that procedure, and this is what you get. Graph the circle represented below, and if I do that, I end up with x plus 3, and so to graph that, it will be at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, and it has a radius of 4, 